so it's Thursday for me. I know. I don't know why I do this every day. I put you through this torture of it's a day before you're going to see this. The lawn, the people who do the yard have already been. I think he just does the edging and the, the uh, lawn, so I can make my way around the edges and do a little work. Today I'm uh, drinking out of Paris. I don't like this one though. I don't. Well, I don't like drinking out of this one because this here, this stuff is matte. It's not. It's cool. I get why they did it because it gives a little extra flair to the whole idea of a Paris mug. But I don't think it comes to the dishwasher as nice, or it's just weird. It's a matte glaze, but it is fun to drink out of Paris. And I did pick from three months today, and I picked this one. My cocoa, my black sheep mug is still in the dishwasher. We didn't run it yesterday, so I'm still behind. We have a bigger dishwasher up here, therefore the, the dishwasher doesn't run every day like it does down in uh, Tucson. But my mocha is quite fine. One of these mornings I'll... Well, actually what I'll do is I'll put the recipe down below and tell you how I make it because this is a sugar-free mocha. This is not a sugared mocha. I just re make my regular latte with heavy cream. So this is low carb, people, low carb. And quite tasty and rich and almost as good as the sugared mochas I was drinking in Port Townsend over the weekend so I've got something for you today are you excited this has been sitting for over a year oh and I've done it again there I keep putting the chair leg on the sweater I have a little repair job for you now the moths got to this, and I told you yesterday that... Ooh, what's that? Hmm, it's just a little piece of yarn. Oh, it's the label. It's the stitching for the label. So this is a sweater that David bought. It's Barber. He bought it at, on the clearance rack at the Barber store years and years ago um, in the UK when we were visiting his mother. Ooh, look at the bird right there. Do you see that little bird that hopped in the air? Um, years ago and he loves this sweater and since we've moved into this little bit more drafty of a house and when he was working at Ron Acres, the heating system because he worked on a mezzanine and it was open to a lab below he was cold the air conditioning was always too cold too high because I don't know why heat rises he should have in the summertime not been that cold but they kept the place cold so he's taken to wearing pullover sweaters a lot more than he ever did before and um, we like, you know, when you're married to a yarn snob, I only approve 100% wool sweaters. This is, um, I'm going to find the tag for you, actually. I was hoping it, yeah, this, this is a 100% lamb's wool sweater. It's probably never been washed, so it will get a wash. But I pulled it from him saying, oh, before we go on our trip next trip I need to wash these and get your sweaters and wash them wash them by hand but he was wearing this when I went up to tell him about the sweater needs and guess what I discovered I discovered let me see if I can put my whole moth holes so a moth had gotten to his sweater now um, I know those two are prominent ones I'll see if there are any more now, we normally store our sweaters in plastic totes. And if I have any cedar laying around, um, which I should do some, I can, uh, we now have um, a laser cutter, so I could do some little cedar things to stick with your w good woolens. Um, I think that's it. I don't know why I thought he had more. Oh, no, here's some more down here. There's one down along the hemline. So here's one. A little pinky through that. Oh, a big one here. This might be a snag. That's a full finger out. Oh, another one here. So a lot on the seam line. Uh, so there's four or five right there. I don't think there are any in the front, or at least not that I found in the front. But he has worn this sweater a lot. And given that it's in such good shape otherwise, like even look at the pilling on this. There is something to be said for not going for the merino and going for the lamb's wool um, or the indigenous sheep of the area you're at because they seem, if when plied well, they don't pill as much. 
Speaking of which, though, if you do have a pilling problem, the sh we do sell pumice stones in the shop, and they work great, these pumice stones, to just take off pills. You just wash your garment, dry your garment, and then just take the, well, and honestly, this, I'll probably do this before I put it in the wash. Just t rub your pumice stone across the top, and it shears off the pills. I had, like, piles of pills on the floor. It really revitalizes your knitwear. And yeah, it's a pumice stone, but it's like low-tech, environmentally friendly, right? The way I look at it. Oh, just found one in the front. Just a little guy down in the ribbing at the bottom. But what do you do about this, right? I could... Oh, he spilled. I could go find some yarn, like darning yarn. Then I might even have this color in my drawers. The heel reinforcement yarn, darning yarn. But I find that repairs like that show. And for socks, I'm all in. I love to have them show, because I think that's part of the beauty of the thing. And like I did on my t-shirt this summer, I embroidered over the top. But David's not gonna be so big on that. He wants his to be a little more invisible. And the best method for creating an invisible repair, on moth holes especially, because they're just little, is to needle felt said repairs. So, what I'm gonna show you today is how I go about needle felting repairs. The hardest part of needle felting repairs is finding your, finding and or blending your um, matching color. All I did is, and granted, you know, you own the cow. So I wandered into the my stash of needle felting wools and I have like a pallet in there. And I started picking up. I had some turquoise. That didn't really work. I had some white. I pulled a bit of the white. I found some periwinkle blue. And I'll show you them together. Might be hard to see the color. This blue is just a tiny bit dark. This white is clearly white. All I'm going to do is take these two colors and blend them together. And I could use carding combs. I could use a little dog brush. Or I can just use my fingers. What I'm going to do with this is try to lighten it up with a little bit of white and make it heathered. Just a little bit of heathering to lighten up the depth of this color. And then I am going to take my needle, needle, my felting needle, um, probably a somewhat fine one. You can start with a blunter one or a um, coarser one and then move to a finer one. But I want this to lay flat. Um, I may, if I get over a cable, I may want to get a triangular needle so that I can create dips, because you can do that with nice fine needles. And um, sculpt, sculpt a cable in. I don't I'm trying to look to see if I have anywhere where I, that needs doing. That's the front, the back. That's the label. I'm just looking to see where the holes are again. I have ribbing, uh, that one. The biggest one to fix is in the ribbing. Oh yeah, look, so this one here is in that cable. So when I put that in, I'm going to try and sculpt in what looks like knit stitches and maybe a bit of a ridge. But it, it's just the air of that. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be super fine detailed. It will be good enough. I will need some more white. So here's what I've done so far in my blending process. Still a bit dark. I know it probably on camera looks exact, but it's just a tiny bit dark. So I'm going to, and I'm going to get rid of the sparkles. This was next to some of Jane's uh, bats, which we have the last remaining, there will be no more, bats from Jane Conrad in the shop. So if you ever um, want them, go look online. I think they're listed. I'm pretty sure I put them up. If not, I need to. So I'm going to blend this. Woo, let's not lose it. Blend this some more and um, lighten it up a little bit even more. The other thing you can do if you're having trouble finding the same color fleece is you can find 100% wool yarn and comb it into a fleece and then needle felt it in. So for example, I have um, some soft Donegal in the garage that is just this color. And if I am, or, and I also have a Heather that is just this color. And if I can't get this to match and I'm concerned about the color, I'll go out there and pull off 12 inches of yarn, grab a dog brush, grab a comb, just a cheapy old comb, and deconstruct that yarn and turn it into batting 
or fiber and needle felt it into these holes. And that will work just as good as anything else. So I'm going to break this now and um, I'll tip you down. I'll probably take you in the house, but we'll see if I can manage this out here and um, show you how I do it. Alright, so on camera, but the camera died, I show I made this one, but you didn't get to see it. So I'm now going to make a second repair right here with my heathered, blended, blue fleece. This hole, I'm going to pull my fleece out and make it at least twice as big as the hole I'm trying to fill. Now this is in the pearl section, this one was up on the cable. So we're going to put this in here. I don't quite need that much. I'm going to lay it on there, make it extend beyond what that part which needs repairing, and into my felt or my um, my ethafoam, and or in this case I have a felted wool pad. Run this in here. Pull that off. I don't need an extra. I can, I can take off the excess. So this can always be trimmed with a pair of scissors. I know that I'm going to need to go across there. And basically, I'm building a margin around the uh, place I'm needle felting and anchoring this down. And then I'll run my hand underneath, lift it up, just because, and the ethafoam has less of a problem, but in both cases you have to do both. Is just poke, 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 lots of poking. And yes, it's always noisy outside, but hopefully you can hear me fine. Lift it up, back under, poke, poke, poke. garbage day. Can you hear that? And an airplane. Both. It's interesting how uh, when you're sitting outside you don't really pay attention to these things until you turn on a camera and then you pay attention to these things. Alright. That hole is now secured. What do I have left to do? Well, so if you see the cable area, I went through and I sculpted in the cable corner so I can go in and I can sculpt that in. I can go in here and I can build lines where the knit stitches are. So I can go in there and really build that cable back in. Build it and build line. And I can follow and create actual looking knit stitches out of this felt. In this case, pearl's a little bit more difficult. I would have to put in horizontal stripes in here and then build a ridge line down where this stripe is. All of this is fiddly, all of this just takes time and um, some swapping out of needles, trying out different needles. But the hole is secure, and when I wash this, this is going to secure even more and flatten out, and so it will blend in with the fluff of the sweater itself. So that's it, I mean, that, that hole is now secure. I think it could use a little more poking. I could feel a little bit of the and what I will do is, before I finish this, I'll flip the sweater back out and I'll go through and um, secure on the inside as well. So I'll do some felting on the inside. When you do this, you get some fluff that goes through. And I'll show you the inside if I can. So if you can look here, there's the inside of the uh, cable one. And here is the inside. Here's what it looks like on the inside of the one I just completed. Right. Here. There it is. You just get a bit of fluff. But that's secure. And it just looks like a little extra fluff. I probably could have matched the blue a little better. Got a little bit of dark patch there and I got a little white patch there. But that's a blending issue and you are, you know, you can blend as long as you want. Let's uh let's move to a new guy now. Just looks like a little bit of fluff got on his sweater. Let's go get that big one. That one. 
I salivate a little bit and get excited when I think about like fixing these things. Kind of like doing a. There we go. Here's a big patch. So here is that big hole. This is going to take a pretty decent sized patch. So I've slid my my backing fiber underneath my um, ethafoam or my felt pad. And here's this big hole. We're going to try and pull it together. And then I'm going to grab my blue. Doesn't need to be too thick. You want it rather wispy because you're going to compact it with the needle. So there's a bit of wisp. We're going to lay that down. Ooh, and this color matches better. This is one that is along the front, so this one would show a bit more. This is on a nice straight panel too, so that's good. And just remember this is rough. I'm roughing it in right now. I'll go back and I'll um, carve in lines, carve in um, like here, I can carve in this line. This one I can do by positioning my fiber in carefully. There we go. If you want to see how this other tool works, it's a, oh, I'm going to unlock it. It's, come on, unlock. It's been a while since I played with this one. Unlocked. Locked. Unlocked. Let's see if we're... There we go. So this one protects you a bit more, but it is more coarse. So this one will... I don't want to move you about too much. But this will felt in. And this is a, probably a pretty good one for roughing in your work. And I'm going to do it on this big hole. There. All right. There. That's now in. And I can carve it out. I can do detail work. Ooh, I should have started this one, and the garbage man is at our house. There we go. Oh yeah, I really like that big one. So I would highly recommend starting with the big one on your rough end process. And then going in with your triangular needle, your triangular fines needle, to put in details. Carve in lines. Poke in an eye. <laughs> I could do faces, and you, you could absolutely, there, see, I just carved in a line right there to give that a detail. And I can do stripes down in here as well to kind of mimic the mid stitches. There. There, that repair is done. All right, we're going to move up to this one now. And then I think this will be my last repair for you to show you, but... Uh, Again, decent sized piece. This isn't a giant hole, but it's a medium sized hole. Spread it around. Go well beyond the margins. There we go. I'm going to use this big guy again because it seems to do the trick. There. And anchor it down. I don't know if I'm in. Hopefully, I can see you. I've tried to get a view of the top of my phone so I can see what you're doing, but see what you see. There. And we'll lift it. Get those edge margins in a little more. This one's probably the best one of all. Always, right? As soon as you uh, practice a little bit, you get better. There. And there. And there, that, repeat, that repair is done. So all I'm going to do is carry on positioning this sweater over and over all the repair areas. Then I'll go back with my fine, my fine needle and sculpt out the air of knit stitches, the look of the cable, stripes to show these knit lines. But um, I will take a final picture of the repairs when I'm all done. Is that a repair? Is that a little bit of dirt? Oh, yep, that's a repair that needs doing. So I'm going to carry on doing this, and um, I will show you the finished product 
probably the cover photo will be David wearing the sweater. And uh, I hope you uh, learned a little bit. A kit, I don't remember how much a little repair kit is. It's not a lot. I think these are 8 to $10. The Ethafoam is like $4. And um, the most expensive part is the palette. So you can pick up palettes in clothing that you normally wear, or you can buy a beginner's kit. Um, I think a, a complete beginner's palette kit, um, I'll have to go check. We have them in the store. I don't know if I have any in stock, but they're like $40. And then you could repair anything because you've got a whole palette of colors in all rainbow. But I'll also be more than willing to put together a I only wear neutrals kit, things like that. So just leave a comment below. Uh, leave a comment below if you'd like me to put together some cal color palettes. And I am always more than willing if you give me, send me an email or um, text me because my cell phone is on the website um, and say, hey, I need to repair some sweaters, take a photo of the sweater. We work on some color range so that you can blend your own repair stuff and you too can fix your, gar your wool garments lickety split. This does work for wovens as well. It's a little harder to hide the, work, the repairs, but it works. All right, I will give you a follow-up and show you the finished product when I'm all done. Here are the repairs. And if you stand back, I can zoom in and you can see where my repairs are. Um, I'm gonna wash this next, and that will be tomorrow's video. So we will uh, do another show and tell afterwards. Here are two more repairs. They're just a little fluffy. Oh, here's a repair down here. Um, it's not obvious, not at all obvious. It looks like maybe he has a piece of, David has a piece of fluff on his sweater. This is the front. It only needed one repair right down here. And yes, I can spot them, but you know how you can spot them when they're your own. I think I already showed you that one. That one's the back. So these are the repairs, and they are, for the most part, finished. I still may go back and do some sculpting and some striping to put in some texture, to put in some definition after I wash it. 